Good evening and welcome to the commencement exercises for the class of 2023. Now please stand and remain standing for the national anthems. <laughs> Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a la ceremonia de graduación de la promoción 2023. Bueno, permanezcan en pie para los himnos nacionales. Gracias. To welcome you to the ceremony, I would like to present Mr. Phelan Bolster, the Upper School Director. Para darles la bienvenida a nuestra ceremonia de hoy, les presento al señor Phelan Bolster, director de la escuela secundaria. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. Don't they look fabulous? <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us your children for these years. We presume they're your best ones. We don't think you have another set that you sent to another school somewhere. Um, but it's been a real pleasure. Uh, we talk a little bit about legacy, just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. We talk a little bit about legacy here at school. And a couple of years ago, we started a tradition. You'll have probably all seen this by now. It's a pendant. And these are the ones that the students got as we registered them as ASM Lancers and alumni um, about a month or so ago, maybe six weeks ago. But last year, when we decided to do this, um, I'm going to take the blame. I'm somewhat, even though I'm a scientist, I'm dimensionally challenged. So I was looking for the size, and we were ordering a, a mock-up of one. And I thought we were in a different dimension. And that's what we got back. <laughs> right? We got this back. So we figured, well, we can't give them that <laughs> last year. So we got other ones made. But we did think it looked kind of cute. Doesn't it look kind of cute? So tonight. In the diplomas is one of these for each of the families. So don't lose them, right? Make sure your parents get them. And you know, you can hang it in your office or I don't know, put it on the fridge or hang off the car mirror, a coaster. The options are endless, I think. All right, but it's a little gift for parents. 
Um, when we think of legacy, we think about what we do every day as people and how that impacts uh, the communities we're in and the world we're in. And often the most we can impact is those people around us. And in schools, that's their peers, their teachers, um, the security, the, f the maintenance teams, the, f the cafeteria teams, all those people. And we also talk a little about, about wanting to, uh, to do school with students rather than to students. And that's a difficult kind of a culture to build. And, and when you've built it, it's a difficult culture to maintain because you have to be very mindful of it. But I'm not just trying to say this because you're there in front of me and they're behind me. But this class have been wonderful role models. I've been here three years. I've watched them grow from 10th graders up to seniors. And there are many examples of how they've done that. None more so than how they celebrated the end of their time at ASM this year. I'm 25 years in international schools. I have seen every ridiculous prank that seniors have done in four different countries, um, in all different places. And we really talked about what that means and what that means about legacy to our students over the last few years. And we believe we've had one of the most wonderful end of year celebrations we could have with a senior class. We had fun, we celebrated them, the parent committee that helped out were wonderful. We didn't need to do anything silly. We didn't need to do anything that negatively impacted anybody. Granted, sleeping over at school with a bunch of seniors isn't, the f isn't my idea of fun, but I d we did it. But it was, it was a wonderful legacy to these students that they wanted to do that with us rather than do that to their school. And I thank you very much for that. Congratulations. They're such good role models. One other example, an individual one, there's, I won't name any names, I won't embarrass anybody, but there's a senior up here who's been such a good role model, an eighth grader has asked that senior to the eighth grader's prom in four years time. <laughs> you can all ask yourselves who it is later on. Okay, I want to very quickly, and I promise very quickly, share two little themes with you. One is about pers uh, perspective, and perspective in the context of happiness. Right now, this evening, is all, it is all about you. A lot of this year has been about you. Tonight will be about you. This weekend will be about you. And a couple of weeks forward will all be about you. And it should be, because you deserve it. But having a perspective in life and understanding that maybe the world doesn't owe you something is a healthy way to look at things, because you will find some challenges in life. A really dear friend of mine, who's the same age as me, we met in the Middle East. We were single when we met. We got married around the same time, and we had our children around the same time. And he had a child, a son, about 16 years ago. And this particular friend of mine is an ex-college football player. He's a PE teacher. His life revolves around athletics. And when his son was born, all he could talk about was batting practice is going to happen, teaching him how to throw a ball, all these things. But unfortunately, his son didn't walk when he was supposed to walk. He didn't talk when he was supposed to talk. Okay, he didn't sleep when he was supposed to sleep, and he wouldn't eat when he was supposed to eat. And about a year and a half later, they were sat in the doctor's office to be told their child had special needs. He was a neurodiverse child, and he was never going to play football like everybody else, and he was never going to, uh, to go to batting practice, etc. And my friend obviously struggled through this for some time. And about a year or two later, when he was coming out of it and had accepted it, I asked him, what was it about the journey that made you be able to get to this point? And he said it was understanding that the world owed him nothing. And the world had given him a most beautiful son. It wasn't the one he thought it was going to be, but it was a beautiful son. And when he was able to accept that perspective that he was not due what he thought he was going to get, he was able to move forward. Many of you are never going to have to go through a struggle like that, but you're going to have challenges in life. And those challenges are going to be met, one, if you have built great relationships and friendships and family that will support you, and you do that now rather than when you need it, and two, that you can manage to have a perspective in your life 
where you understand you're owed nothing, okay? And that will allow you to accept the challenges in front of you. The other thing I want to talk about is embracing your journey. And I think it was Tolkien said that um, people who wander are not lost. My mother, who uh, is 82 now, used to come into my bedroom when I was a high schooler, around junior year, and she'd look at me and she'd see I'm doing nothing. And she'd say, what do you want to do with your life? And I would say, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'll study. And then she'd list off all the awful jobs I was going to end up with because I wasn't doing any work. And I'd get motivated. And five minutes later, I'd lose my motivation. And I'd be thinking, eh, those jobs aren't bad. Right? Eventually, I got through senior year, barely. I managed to, um, to get two offers to study in, in university. One was to study uh, um, electronics. And the second was to study marine biology. To this day, I never applied for a marine biology course. I don't know why I was accepted to one. I think my mother must have filled out an application. <laughs> but I really don't know, and I was not interested, so I did electronics. From there, I went to university. Well, it was actually a community college. Then I went to university, and I went to university because another friend of mine, Bernard, who was also in this community college, college doing electronics with me, he had this pathway that he was going to use community college to jump in and do a degree at a full-scale university, which he did, and a PhD afterwards, and so, so on. So we got to the end of the two years, and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So Bernard said he was going to study physics. He was going to study physics with medical technology in the UK. So I said, I'll check that box. So I did. I checked the box, and I followed Bernard to university in the UK. I wasn't a very good physicist, but I got through it. And at the end of it, I wasn't quite sure what to do, but Bernard was leaving. You know. He had enough. Right? So I decided I'd go home, and I worked on a farm for a year. And during that year was when I decided maybe education would be something I would like. So I gave that a go. And from there, I ended up doing whatever I've done to end up on this stage boring you. Okay? The point I'm making, though, and it was made very well by Pedro Suarez, whose sister Barbara is up here, when he spoke to a group of juniors and seniors and maybe some 10th graders as well this year about his journey through college. And you may not know what your future holds, and you may not know what you want to do at the end of college or what you want to do after college or even what you want to do now. But if you just do something, at the end of it, it's going to offer you another set of opportunities. And if you take those opportunities, they'll offer you another set of opportunities. So if you're wandering, you're not lost. You're just going step by step, and you will find your way. I'm absolutely positive of that. Once again, this is a wonderful class. It is a class with a wonderful legacy. They are kind. They are empathetic. They are hardworking. They really are a joy to be around. And even if I don't fancy sleeping at school, if I had to sleep in school with a senior class, it would probably be them. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to introduce our first student speaker this evening, Carlos Shaver, designated by his peers to deliver this speech. In the words of his college counselor, Carlos has attended ASM his entire life, this being his 15th year. He loves his school and is the embodiment of what it is to be a community member. His involvement in the ASM community reminds us of the World's Waldo cartoon character. If you look carefully at any picture, you'll find him. Carlos once said, every day when I walk through the school doors, I talk to the guard on duty about soccer for a couple of minutes and with my high school director and headmaster. I then pass by the library where I say hello to Dr. Bree and Ms. Keating. I see my friends every morning and go to class with them. Carlos has taken advantage of every opportunity ASM offers and has given back to our community twofold. A great example of this was his IB Cast project where he developed a Spotify playlist of the top songs of the past six decades for the school's 60th anniversary. anniversary. It was a big hit. Over his time at school, he has demonstrated curiosity a true interest in learning and tenacity 
um, to lean into any academic challenges in the IB Diploma program. He has matured and grown as an academic student and person, and he is a true leader by example in our school. Carlos is kind, friendly, always willing to help others, and above all, a good person. Next year, he'll be attending Villanova University. Es un placer presentarles al primer alumno que hablará esta tarde, Carlos Shaver, que ha sido designado por sus compañeros para elegirse a ustedes hoy. Como dice su asesor de universidad, Carlos lleva estudiando en ASM toda su vida escolar, siendo este su decimoquinto año. Carlos adora su colegio y es un perfecto ejemplo de lo que supone ser un miembro de nuestra comunidad. Su dedicación como miembro de la comunidad de ASM nos recuerda al personaje animado Where's Waldo, donde está Wally. Si miras el dibujo fijamente, lo encontrarás. Carles dijo un día, todos los días al llegar al colegio, primero me preparo a hablar con el agente de seguridad ese día. Y luego me paso unos minutos hablando con Mr. Bolster y Mr. Weinberg. Al pasar por la biblioteca, saludo a la doctora Bree y a Ms. Kieran. Veo a mis amigos todas las mañanas y me voy a clase con ellos. Carlos ha aprovechado cada oportunidad que le ha ofrecido ISM y él también ha dado mucho a nuestra comunidad. Podríamos decir que Carlos ha dado tanto o más a ISM de lo que ha recibido. Un buen ejemplo de esto es su proyecto de CAS para el IB, donde desarrolló una playlist con las canciones más populares de las últimas seis décadas para el 60 aniversario de ISM. Fue todo un éxito. Durante sus años escolares ha demostrado un interés genuino en aprender, demostrando curiosidad y tenacidad a la hora de afrontar cualquier reto presentado por el programa de bachillerato internacional. Ha madurado y crecido como estudiante, así como persona, y es un verdadero líder y ejemplo a seguir. Carlos es simpático, siempre dispuesto a ayudar a otros y, sobre todo, buena persona. El año que viene estudiará en Villanova University. Carlos. Good afternoon. All right, before I start, I want to have a memory of today, so I'm going to take a selfie of all of us. Okay. So if you could please look at the camera. Okay. <clears throat> it is. All right. This speech goes back exactly 364 days ago, when I was sitting around over there, during the graduation of the class of 2022. Last year's student speaker, Luis Antripayun, spoke fondly about his years in ASM. When I, go, when I got home, I thought, what if I was in this position next year? That would be incredible. In the weeks that followed, I came up with a short speech, one that I thought was amazing. I forgot about it for months, never looking back at it, until Mr. Dempsey announced that there would be a student speaker at graduation. I was with Diego and Nick, who I told my inspiring speech from the summer. They started laughing and said it was corny. <laughs> to this day, I'm still frustrated with them. But I soon realized that their reaction was justified. When writing my speech, I couldn't make it perfect in the first try. It would take at least a few drafts to make something decent, then go again. That's some advice for you. Start, fail, go again as many times as you need to in order to have something worthwhile. My next draft started here in this auditorium, around there. To be more precise, during my sports science paper three, where I finished with 30 minutes of spare time. In my opinion, the exam time was too long for an exam of that length. So don't worry, mom and dad, I, I did well. At least I think I did. <laughs> I did not want to sleep to kill time, so I decided to use some, some scrap paper and started writing my speech. Fast forward a couple weeks, more specifically this week, where I was cramming all my ideas into a Google Doc, listening to music, and jamming my way through the speech. I can't lie to you, from time to time, I shed a tear or two. Reminiscing these last 15 years and crunching them into a short speech was hard especially with so many memories, like the lower school pool parties, the middle school trips, and all the senior events these years. As I'm talking about shedding a tear or two, I want to go back to April 14th of this year, our senior skip day, a day where practically the whole grade was together, a day where I would always remember. I was able to play football one last time with all the boys, enjoy the night with all my friends, and have a good laugh for many hours. I remember how well the grade was integrating with each other. I saw individuals who, despite their insane differences, we're taking pictures together, smiling, laughing, and taking care of each other. After the event, I went to a friend's house where I reminisced one more time about my childhood and watched undoubtedly the best movie in history, Cars. <laughs> After the movie, I drove back home by myself, and I realized that I didn't have to go back to waking up at 7.35 a.m. to go to school, to laugh, to learn, or sometimes to sleep in class. 
It hurt. These 15 years had come to an end. I wouldn't have any more football practices every Tuesday and Thursday. I wouldn't have lunch at a packed table with, Ali, with, with the boys where Ali would take your food and say, you don't want that, and proceed to take your bread after he said in the lunch slide that he did not want any bread. Those small details were the cherry on top, and I broke. But as soon as I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about what a great time we all had that day. And it reminded me of something Mr. Bolster has told us many times, including today, and I think you might see where I'm going with this, and I apologize, but it may be the last time you hear this. There are two sayings that Mr. Bolster has repeated constantly since his arrival three years ago. The first one is sweep the sheds, where we clean up for ourselves and take opportunities to be kind. The other is about legacy, where we ask ourselves, can I say that my community has benefited from my presence? Whenever Mr. Bolster would say this, you'd hear students laugh like they just did, or say, ugh, oh, not again, we've had enough. Despite the complaints, I know that Mr. Bolster's comments have affected our actions. I have seen how kind the class of 2023 is toward each other and the people around them, or how the lower grades look up to all of us due to our achievements in and out of school. I firmly believe that the kindness, love, and respect that all of you show has been reflected onto this school. This realization reminded me of a Frank Sinatra song, My Kind of Town. Some of its lyrics resonated with me, and I would like to share them with you all. In our case, Chicago's ASM. Now this could only happen to a guy like me, and only happen in a town like this. So may I say to each of you most gratefully, as I throw each one of you a kiss, this is my kind of town. Chicago's my kind of town. Chicago's my kind of people too. People who smile at you, and each time I roam, Chicago's calling me home. Chicago's why I grin like a clown. It's my kind of town. This is the type of place, uh, this is the type of place ASM is. A place where I throw a kiss to everyone. A place where people smile at you. A place that makes me grin. And it's thanks to you, the class of 2023, that I feel this way. Here's another date for you. April 20th, 2023, it's a senior sleepover, where many girls sat in front of the TV and watched High School Musical 3. <laughs> I joined in for a while. The girls sang excitedly to all the movie songs, but there was one song that the girls did not sing. Instead, they quietly cried and hugged each other as they listened to the last song of the movie, where the characters graduated. The song goes something like this. Who says we have to let it go? It's the best part we've ever known. Let's celebrate where we come from. The friends who've been there all along. But someday, we'll be looking back. Memories we'll have. All the songs we lived through. Step into the future, but hold on to High School Musical. High School lives on forevermore. So, as the characters in High School Musical sang, step into the future, but hold on to ASM. Hold on to those memories where in a couple years, you'll be able to look back at everything we lived through. Be happy that it happened. Though today is a sad day because it marks the end of our time here, I want, to, I want you all to stay positive and proud of what you've done, proud of the work you've put in, proud of the friends you made and have, proud of your personal achievements. I want you to know that your family, friends, community, and myself are extremely proud of you. Be happy for what's to come. I want to go a bit further with the word proud and what it means to me when looking at all 92 of you. In front of me, it's a long list, I see athletes, writers, artists, singers, musicians, entrepreneurs, leaders, activists, service members, volunteers, coders, and more. Such a varied class where in each category we have succeeded. However, I also see caring, charming, humorous, incredible, and chatty people. I don't know where you are, Trip, but that's you. <laughs> this class is also a hardworking class. I wanted to separate this word from the rest because there has been a lot of hard work done by all of you, which deserves recognition and praise. And for that, I am proud of you all. Though we were stuck with the case of senioritis, like Michael Scott once said, I'm running away from my responsibilities, and it feels good. We all needed to run away at times, but we came back and worked very hard to ace our extended essays, IAs, and final exams. I believe this is why it makes us such a valuable class. In all humbleness and seriousness, I think the class of 2023 is the best ever. To finish off my speech, I want to recognize several groups of people. Please do not clap right after I mention each group. Instead, please clap and recognize those mentions at the end as I walk off. Clap for the students that worked hard to graduate, whether they finished assignments an hour or a week before the deadline. Clap for the parents that have worked tirelessly to make sure that we've had this amazing education and for their unconditional love and support. Uh, I got lost. Oh. Clap for the family and friends that made us laugh, kept us entertained, and listened to us. Clap for the teachers, staff, and directors whose advice will guide us through the future. Clap for the coaches that look for the best versions of ourselves to succeed. Clap for the tech crew and maintenance who prepare events like this one today. Clap for security who care for our safety and greet us daily as we enter school. Those greetings are usually the first acts of kindness we receive every day. We should be thankful for them. 
Clap for the cafeteria crew who keep us fed and caffeinated. Clap for the school nurses that make sure that our stomach aches disappeared soon after giving us tea and cookies. It usually worked. Finally, clap for the cleaning crew who make sure everything is clean and ready to use, especially during the pandemic. I want to thank you all for making me laugh, being great classmates, and listening to me talk and talk and talk these last 15 years. You are finally free. For the last year, I have thought of how to finish off my speech. And the only thing I could think of was a huge confetti explosion that would end off my speech. So, without further ado, confetti crew, you ready? All right. Class of 2023, out. <laughs> um, It didn't work. It didn't work. Thank you. Is that correct? Our next speaker is our 2023 class salutatorian, Stella Louise Lopez Phillips. As her college uh, counselor describes her, there are students who exemplify the best of a class, the heart of a group, and Stella is such a student. She is clearly academically accomplished, extremely hardworking, unassuming, and one of the most thoughtful and compassionate young women I've worked with as a college counselor. Stella has been at ASM for 13 years and is the proud daughter of one of her faculty members. She can be found on stage, working with individuals in need through our Caring Hands Club, playing volleyball, participating in Motto United Nations, mastering difficult Chinese characters, volunteering at the dog shelter, but always she is aware of others and deeply interested in them. When we last talked, it was the social sciences and the University of Virginia she hoped would next foster and guide her towards her goal. How lucky is UVA. Nuestra siguiente oradora es la alumna que ha quedado segunda de la promoción de 2023, Stella Louise López Phillips. Como la describe su orientadora a la universidad, hay estudiantes que podemos decir que representan lo mejor de una clase, el corazón de la clase, y Estela es ese tipo de estudiante. Obviamente, académicamente es excelente, muy trabajadora, humilde y además una de las mujeres más empáticas y humanas que he conocido desde que he trabajado como orientadora de la universidad. Estela lleva en ASM 13 años y está orgullosa de ser hija de un miembro de nuestro profesorado. Si buscas a Estela, la encontrarás o bien en el escenario o hablando con personas necesitadas a través de nuestro club Caring Hands Club, jugando al voleibol, participando en Model United Nations, perfeccionando esos caracteres tan difíciles de mandarín, haciendo voluntariado en un refugio de perros abandonados, pero siempre preocupándose por los demás y con un interés genuino. La última vez que hablamos quería estudiar Ciencias Sociales en la Universidad de Virginia, donde espera conseguir alcanzar todos sus objetivos. ¡Qué suerte tienen en UBA! ¿Estado? In case nobody noticed, I'm really paranoid, so I brought my own copy, but I see that it's here, so everything's good. Okay. Firstly, I would just like to say it's going to be incredibly hard to follow up the speech that was just made because it was pretty perfect, but I'm going to do my best. So thank you to the teachers, staff, guests, friends and family, and most importantly to the graduating class of 2023. Firstly, here goes a throwback to my fellow golden oldies who have been here since day one. Our kindergarten days were marked by snack breaks with Tosta Rica cookies and apple juice the spinny things on the old playground by the parking lot before the renovations, and nap time, during which, despite Miss Carol's valiant efforts, hardly anybody napped. But somewhere along the way, snack time became MP time. Apple juice became a café con leche from the cafeteria, made with love by Yoli or Chris. The spinny things on the playground became textbooks, making our heads spin even more. And nap time disappeared altogether. I would like to start by thanking each and every one of you for the decade and a half that we have spent together. It has been a privilege to grow up with you guys and to watch each and every one of you grow into capable, intelligent people. I am confident that all of us will go on to do amazing things. Secondly, I would like to thank the teachers from lower, middle, and upper school who have helped each and every one of us in some way or another. I was raised by two art teachers, 
passionate in their craft and undaunting in their determination to instill in my brother and me the importance and value of education. Watching my mother and father take pride in their work has made me truly appreciate what it means to learn, to pass knowledge from one person to another. As I'm sure we've all heard in countless community meetings, and I'm so sorry, but I have to quote Mr. Bolster again. <laughs> Um, Mr. Bolster likes to say that as teachers, their goal is to do education with us rather than to us. We come to school in the hopes of pursuing a valued education, one that will serve us as a stepping stone along whichever path we choose to take. Teachers serve as our guides along this path, pointing out potholes and bumps while hinting at shortcuts. Without them, the road ahead would be much harder to navigate. Some of us may even crash. So to all of our teachers, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Lastly, as we embark on the next chapter of our lives, it would be a crime not to recall some of our fondest memories from our time at ASM. I would like to touch on a few collective experiences that are specific to the graduating class of 2023. From the infamous cheese club to about, <laughs> to about 300 hours of cumulative sleep deprivation from the IV, we, we have truly been through it all. On a more serious note, we, the class of 2023, had the honor of being the last class that was taught sixth grade science by Mr. Peterson. As an integral figure of the ASM community and someone who has undoubtedly touched all of our hearts, thank you, Mr. Peterson, for your dedication to your work, kind gestures, and genuine care for all of us. Speaking of sixth grade, I would like to thank Alejandro Verges for starting and maintaining the Caring Hands Club. I don't know where you are, but thank you. As Mr. Dempsey once said, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> As Mr. Dempsey once said, this after school activity may well be one of the most valuable things our year is leaving behind. I don't want to get too sentimental, but I do want to remind my fellow graduates that no matter where you go next year, there won't be a Dr. Bree chasing you down the hallway to meet a deadline, nor will there be a Miss Keating to magically remove your bag when you leave it unattended for two seconds, <laughs> nor will there be a Miss Carolina to kindly fill out a tardy slip for you three times a week. My point is that although we will all miss ASM, it's really the people here that make this school what it is. Without the guards to check our senior privilege, the cafeteria and cleaning staff, the nurse to take care of us, and the hundreds of people that form this community, there would be nothing to miss. So today, I would like to leave you with one piece of advice. Appreciate the people in your life. Thank them. Spend time with them. Take your time. Places and objects come and go, but a friendship, a connection, is forever. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2023. Now, I present to you one of our two class of 2023 valedictorians, Camille Isnard. In the words of her college counselor, Camille is multidimensional and great at most everything she undertakes. This is because of her drive, her many interests, her perseverance, and passion. There is real creativity to her forward motion, whether that's looking at a chemistry problem from a fresh angle, writing her fictional novel Under the Willow, leading a group of peers while teaching in Tanzania, or dancing flamenco, or her work as the one student on an innovation seminar panel of ASM teachers. We ask our seniors where, where they feel at most at home when not at home. With abundant detail, Camille wrote about ASM being that place. Because of the many amazing teachers who have taught her and the brilliant friendships she has developed and will have for a lifetime. The sounds, the smells, the familiar images, but just as important is what Camille has contributed to ASM. She is approachable, tolerant, interested, engaging, and cares. It is students like Camille who allow our diverse, ever-changing student population to thrive. With her gratitude, Camille heads to Georgetown University, where she, or, she will make her presence known in her own unique and creative way. Ahora les presento a la primera de los dos alumnos que han quedado primeros de la promoción 2023, Camille Snell. Como dice su orientador de universidad, Camille es una persona multidimensional y excelente en todo lo que se propone a realizar. Esto se debe a su motivación, interés, tesón y pasión. Se mueve con verdadera creatividad, si bien al analizar un problema de química o al escribir su novela de ficción, 
Under the Willow, debajo del sauce. Guiando a un grupo de compañeros en Tanzania, bailando flamenco y trabajando como estudiante en el panel de profesores de ISM de Seminario de Innovación. Pedimos a nuestros estudiantes de último año dónde se sienten en casa, fuera de casa. Con gran detalle, Camille escribió que ISM era ese sitio. Esto es principalmente debido a los excelentes profesores que le han dado clase durante todos estos años, así como las amistades que se ha forjado que son para toda la vida. Los sonidos, olores, imágenes familiares que hacen ISM su otra casa, pero igual que el colegio le ha dado a Camille, Camille ha dado a ISM. Es cercana, tolerante, involucrada y sensible. Es con estudiantes como Camille que logramos ser una comunidad diversa, tolerante y siempre cambiante. Con todo nuestro agradecimiento, Camille se embarcará el año que viene en atender la Universidad de Georgetown, donde se hará conocer de forma única y creativa. Camille. Good afternoon, faculty, family and friends, and fellow peers. It's been a pleasure listening to the wonderful speeches that have been shared here today. I feel such an incredible honor to be able to give a speech on behalf of the class of 2023. I don't, however, feel as though I deserve this any more than any of my classmates that are seated behind me on this stage. We all deserve recognition for the countless hours of work we've put in throughout the years, struggling with IAs, mocks, exams, all in aims of achieving our goals and impatiently waiting for this incredible day to finally arrive. Nevertheless, this would not have been possible for me without so much help and support. My amazing parents, I cannot even begin to put into words the appreciation I have for you both. Claire and Laurent, you're the best role models I could have asked for and I could not be prouder to call myself your sister. To the special people seated behind me that have inspired and accompanied me throughout this journey, the relationships and bonds we have formed with each other, I'm sure, will last a lifetime. 15 years. For some, that sounds like the age of an annoying teenager. <laughs> For me, that's the amount of time I've had the privilege to attend this wonderful school. Because really, this isn't just a school. As I look back at our time here, I'm reminded of all the times we played Just Dance with Miss Walker <laughs> in business, of hearing all about Mr. Block's dream of opening a burrito shack in Econ, of seeing Mr. Bolster in flip-flops and sweatpants at the senior barbecue, <laughs> of watching Mr. Hughes rock his dance moves at last year's prom, and so much more. Soon enough, I, along with my peers, will no longer walk past these hallways. Yet instead of feeling empty at the thought of that, I feel so incredibly grateful for the amount of time I got to spend here. So, ASM staff, faculty, and fellow peers, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this a place I can call home. I can even remember when we were all asked the big question in elementary school of what do you want to be when you grow up? Back then, it almost seemed like an imagination game. Come up with the coolest sounding career and done. The room was filled with astronauts, football stars, princesses. Personally, I wanted to be either a dolphin trainer or one of Michael Jackson's background dancers. <laughs> I still have hope. Now that we're here, though, within reach of deciding what we really want to be, the choice is terrifying. And while at the age of 17, I'm not quite able to offer any life-changing advice, I can tell you a quote I've been hearing for as long as I can remember from the person I admire most. Les décisions prises par les autres sont toujours les bonnes. Which roughly translates to the decisions taken by others are always meant to be. You can't expect to have everything go your way in life simply because there are things that you don't have control over. So, class, as we soon depart from this auditorium and head our separate ways, I urge you to not stress if you've tried your best and don't get the position or the job or the award you wanted because the best successes come after the greatest disappointments. Instead, make the most of what you have, carpe diem, if you will. And as my favorite Disney character, Dory, likes to say, just keep swimming. So, class of 2023, here's to a chaotic future full of ups and downs of hard and wonderful days. As Maya Angelou once said, life is not measured by the breaths we take, but by the number of moments that take your breath away. I think for all of us on this stage, this is one of those moments that takes your breath away. So let's enjoy it. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2023.
Now I present to you the second of our two class of 2023 valedictorians, Kevin Wiley Barker. In the words of his college counselor, Kevin came to ASM at the beginning of 11th grade after attending six other schools since kindergarten. He said, I like this school better than the, other, the one I came from. He found ASM to be welcoming and the personal attention and connections are so much better. His transition was good, good, except he said the language was a little rough. He didn't speak or understand Spanish very well, and on the soccer field, the, the coach spoke Spanish, so he didn't know what to do. However, his friends like Tristan and Carlos helped him. He's much better now at understanding. Kevin's love of learning goes far beyond those of subjects related to his career goals of becoming an aeronautical engineer. He loves history, for example, and his, his IBHL history teacher commented, he's like having another teacher in class because of the knowledge he adds to the subject matter. Kevin feels it's his responsibility to go home and put what he learns in school into practice and expand upon what's taught in the classroom. He seeks understanding from multiple perspectives and he can make interdisciplinary connections. His accomplishments are never to impress others, but for the love of learning. You would never know this because Kevin is humble, but he was a 2021 National Merit Scholarship Program Commended Scholar. Kevin's friends and teachers said he has a dry sense of humor. He enjoys soccer, is an avid 1980s movie buff, and he is a kind, genuinely nice person. He will be att attending Brigham Young University next fall. Ahora les presento al segundo de los dos alumnos que han quedado primeros de la promoción 2023, Kevin Willey Barker. Como le describe su orientador de universidad, Kevin vino a ISM a principios del grado 11, después de estudiar en seis colegios distintos, desde parvulario. Kevin dijo, me gusta más este colegio que mis colegios anteriores. Le pareció que ISM, comparado con sus otros colegios, es mucho más acogedor y la atención personal y las amistades que ha cosechado, mucho mejores. Su transición fue buena, excepto por el idioma, que me resultó un poco duro de aprender, cita. No habla ni entendía el español y su entrenador de fútbol le hablaba y por lo tanto él no le entendía. Sin embargo, sus amigos, Tristán y Carlos, le ayudaron. Ahora entiende mucho más. La pasión de Kevin para aprender va más allá de los cursos que están relacionados con su objetivo de ser ingeniero aeronáutico. Por ejemplo, la pasión a la historia. Y su profesor de Ivy History dijo sobre él, es como tener a otro profesor en clase por los conocimientos que aporta el temario. Kevin cree que es su re responsabilidad poner en práctica lo que ha aprendido en el colegio e incrementar sus conocimientos. Busca entender las cosas desde varios puntos de vista y sus hazañas no son para impresionar a los demás, sino porque tiene pasión por aprender. Aunque nunca sabrías esto, porque Kevin es genuinamente humilde. Sus amigos y profesores dicen que tiene un sentido del humor maduro. Le encanta jugar al fútbol, las películas de los 80 y es una persona encantadora. El año que viene estudiará en la Universidad Brigham Young. Kevin. Good evening, Mr. Ben, Mr. Bolster, faculty, students, friends, family, and everyone who made it here today or logged in to share this special day with us. I'm honored to have been asked to speak today as we close out our long educational journey here at the American School of Madrid. If you know me, you know I usually talk for hours, all day long, nonstop. <laughs> so the three minute limit given to me will be a bit of a challenge. I'm truly blessed not to be up here in front of you all, but to have been a part of our shared experiences here in Madrid as members of the graduating class at ASM. Over the last se several years, those of us who are from Spain and those of us from elsewhere had amazing experiences here with a beautiful country, <clears throat> celebrated culture, the world's best football, Atletico Madrid. <laughs> and a deep history. Where else can you see the Holy Grail, the tomb of an apostle, the Pillars of Hercules, the point of embarkation of history's greatest explorers, and walk the footsteps of Europe's most influential monarchs, all within a short drive of ASM. Those who have come before us have made the past great and the present a pretty good place to be. However, there is still work to do. How can we keep progressing and make this world better as we head to universities or our other challenges here in Spain or across the world? It is our turn to make the, take the knowledge that we have gained at this great institution and use it to make the future great as well. 
One particularly important lesson we have learned from this amazing institution is that we must dream big, create very lofty goals, and work hard as though the future depends on it. Only through hard work and perseverance can we make great things happen. I've learned this lesson many times here at ASM. Coach Fuentes made the football team believe we could be champions, and then he made us work for it. Each team member poured heart and soul into the effort, and it wasn't long before that work paid off. We overcame adversity, and we brought tournament trophies back to this hallowed institution. ASM's other teams who had similar goals and made similar sacrifices had similar successes. It happened in our classrooms, too. Our professors taught us to keep our heads up, eyes on our goals, <clears throat> and work hard for success. They worked to raise their students to great high, heights, inspiring us to be de dedicated and to make sacrifices for our learning. Many of us became completely changed in the process. They definitely made us better. You all know that I'm very outwardly emotional. And, <laughs> and as I contemplate leaving ASM for the last time to pursue these dreams, I start to miss my friends, my coaches, my classmates and my teachers, and I think, oh, I could just sit here and cry. I think everyone would understand if I did that, but instead, I'm going to do what you all plan to do. Go out and win the trophies of life by working hard and making this world better. My last advice is this. As you leave the comfortable known world, surrounded by friends and family, and venture into the unknown, think of those who have gone before us, and emulate their example by working hard and using the knowledge you have gained here. Remember the Spanish motto, plus ultra, and most importantly, may your hats fly as high as your dreams. Thank you, and good luck. Traditionally, members of the senior class provide a musical interlude at our ceremony. This year, a group of musicians from the class of 2023 will be performing a medley of songs arranged by Max Garcia Andrews. Es tradición que algunos miembros de la promoción nos deleiten con una actuación musical. Tengo el gusto de presentarles al grupo musical de la promoción del 2023 que interpretará varias canciones producidas por Max Garcia Andrews.
We now invite Mr. Ronan Dempsey to introduce the class of 2023. Mr. Dempsey has been a member of the English department at ASM since 2018. He is also the grade level leader for the class of 2023. A continuación, el señor Ronan Dempsey, profesor del Departamento de Inglés de ISM desde 2018 y, coordinación de esta, y coordinador de esta promoción, os presentará a los estudiantes de la promoción 2023. Mr. Dempsey. My introduction fell short compared to the student one. They asked me to write it myself. I should have got Mr. McCracken to do it. Um, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to actually address the students themselves, since this is the last time we're all going to do this. Uh, can you all hear me? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Since this is the last time we're all going to be together, at least like this, uh, just feel free to listen in, though. Uh, unfortunately, Marco Ramos couldn't be with us today, but I hope he's watching, or he will, because it applies to him too. Seniors, and you are seniors for a few more minutes, my job this evening is to introduce you to the class of 2023. It's a difficult job. There are 94 individuals in the group with lots of personalities, talents, interests, and a host of different futures drifting into view over the horizon. I'm rotating down to grade level leader of the class of 2027 next year, and so I thought about the things that I will remember about you and tell them in the hopes that they pick up some of your better habits and dynamics. You were the first seniors in a long time at ASM to be paired up with students from the lower school as buddies. When I announced it to you, there was excitement and also apprehension. I think it felt like a responsibility you weren't ready for. I remember Claudio, who's one of our golden oldies, telling me that he had a senior buddy back in kindergarten, I think. And he still remembers his buddy giving him a Hot Wheels car on the day they first met. A couple of weeks later, we gathered outside the upper school at lunchtime for the first meeting. There was excitement and anxiety rippling through the crowd. And I admit, I felt a little bit of it too. But I knew I was it was going to go well when I saw Claudio walking past me on the way to meet his buddy with the Hot Wheels car in his hand. Oh. <laughs> I picked out this one anecdote in particular because I think it shows a lot of the things that I want to say about you guys as a group. Uh, in general, so this isn't just about you, Claudio, calm down. Uh, <laughs> first is your sense of fun, enthusiasm, and collaboration. We've tried to find ways to create space and time for students to shape culture at the school, and you say yes and. We created community days, and you turned them into sing-alongs, karaoke sessions, and even an impromptu salsa dancing session. We set up the buddies, and you made them feel special. You met them on their level, and you played with them enthusiastically. In fact, I had to tell some of you to slow down and to let the little kids have a go on the slide, so very enthusiastically. We asked for suggestions for how you thought seniors at ASM should finish out their year, and you suggested a sleepover. So we made the sleepover happen, and you made it your own. We went to the gym after 11 p.m. because you had requested the use of a parachute, every single ball in the school, some trolleys for people half your size, and worryingly, some rope. Watching the mayhem that followed, and in between w wondering whether I'd still have a job by the time the sun came up, I reflected upon how you still remember to have childish fun, despite the difficult couple of years you've gone through, and how nice that was to see. Secondly, there is the sense of community you have built in your grade and the broader school community. I know that students in other grades have expressed admiration for the way that you have come together over the last year in particular, transcending the differences that tend to divide grades, whether they be as a result of language, culture, or friend groups. You've demonstrated empathy, kindness, and care in small ways. You make a point of honoring the teachers and experiences you had in lower and middle school, which often get forgotten or ignored. You leave behind the Caring Hands group, a club centered around service. You also leave behind a concrete example of the ways that students can influence school culture in positive ways. Too many of you to mention have volunteered time and energy for the good of your classmates, grade level, school community, and beyond over the years purely because you see the intrinsic value of existing in communities that look out for one another. You'll notice I haven't mentioned academics. That's just a joke. There's obviously a lot of academic talent in the grade, but academics are a given in the school. Every student in this group has faced down a rigorous academic program over these years, and the fact that you're sitting here today is a testament to your determination, as well as the patience and skill of your teachers. There's also a huge amount of athletic and creative talent in this group. We have skiers, Footballers, basketballers, 
rugby players, runners, martial artists, and a few gym enthusiasts. We also have writers, visual artists, dancers, designers, stylists, and musicians. You see, uh, we just saw a great example of that there. One of the huge pleasures of working in a school, in a high school in particular, is being able to defer to the much better knowledge and ability of the students. And I took advantage of this on a number of occasions over the last two years. I want to recognize one more aspect of your group personality, gratitude. Within six months of starting high school, you had to make the move to online classes. You missed out on a lot of previously routine milestones over these years. This could have resulted in a sense of resentment, but you have only shown appreciation and gratitude for getting to finish high school with a return to normality, to take trips, to do activities, see each other's faces, and graduate with your families and friends around you. You say thank you frequently for small things, and you've absolutely made the most of your last year of high school. You've obviously had low moments and days when you needed to vent, but you always return to a baseline of positivity and gratitude. While we're on the subject of gratitude, I want to recognize one more time the work that the parental committee has put into making your final year of high school a pleasant and memorable one. They poured their energy, time, and love into breakfasts, memorabilia, and decorations. So I'm sure I speak on your behalf when I say one more thank you for what they've added to the school over the past year. <laughs> You'll notice I'm only focusing on the positives. Since it's your graduation, you have an audience. Uh, I let your families and friends use their imaginations to conjure the various ways that you lot have shaved a couple of days off my life expectancy. Uh, okay, so on your first day as seniors in September, we had an assembly in the NPR just downstairs. You all closed your eyes and envisioned this day sitting up here in your gowns and caps with your, fam with your family sitting in the audience here to celebrate you. I think for a lot of you this day was purely theoretical, but here we are. We asked you to set some goals for yourselves based on how you wanted to feel about the year you just completed, either academic or otherwise. Our goal, along with academics and along with your families, was to give you the skills and self-management tools to reach whatever goals you set for yourself, and more importantly, the self-respect, reflection, and resilience to be okay if you don't. The most quoted man of the evening, Mr. Bolster. downside to go and laugh, always says there is a skill set to being happy in life, and I agree with him. It's a different quote, so it's okay. Amongst those skills are communication, self-discipline, organization, and introspection. You know better than me how well we did in relation to that goal. School is not just a place where we go to learn about discrete subjects, and that's not why most of the faculty you've encountered in your time here do what they do. Until now, you've spent the majority of your days in school. Our job is also to help to shape the person that you are along with your families and friends. It's on you now. The next phase of your life will involve a little or a lot less guidance, supervision. No teachers, advisors, Dr. Breeze, or me to chase you down or remind you to check your emails. Do check your emails, by the way, do them. <laughs> Our hope is that you continue to honor the legacy that you are leaving behind, that you build communities like the one you built here, that you continue to act with kindness, humility, and empathy. A personal hope of mine is that you find a way to spend your days that rewards you in the same way that I've been rewarded as I accompanied you over these last few years. Few years. I told you this year that we wanted to celebrate you if you leave and miss you when you were gone. We are here to celebrate you today and we will miss you in September. We are proud of you and we are looking forward to the adventures in your future. Take care. Thank you. We now come to that point in the program when diplomas are presented by the headmaster, Mr. Benjamin Weinberg, the director of the upper school, Mr. Phelan Bolster, the chairman of the board of trustees, Mr. Michael Willish, and the former chairman of the board of trustees, Mr. Steve Shaver. Ha llegado el momento de la entrega de los diplomas. A continuación serán entregados por el director del colegio, don Benjamin Weinberg, el director de secundaria, don Phelan Bolster, el presidente del consejo, don Michael Willish, y el anterior presidente del consejo, don Steve Shaver.
can practice this. Will the first row please stand? <clears throat> Sofia Beatriz Alonso Montalvo. Carlota Álvarez Jiménez. <laughs> Tristan Balakrishnan. Kevin Wiley Barker. <laughs> Ian Beck Cristobal. Clara Vergal de Oteza. <laughs> Alejandro Verges Coronel. Sydney Bolura de Blas. Paloma Carubia. Claudio Casinello Fabregas. <laughs> Stefan Emre Celebi. Sophia Chen. Yeah. Keiji Chihara. Diego Sid Florida. <laughs> Alessandro Cohen. Noah Cuevas Craft. Emiliano David Darquea. Juan Tomás de Elizalde Bridge. <laughs> Thank you. 
complicated part. So the second rope is done. Mark Dionisios de Souza. Clara de Torres Enseñat. Rodrigo de la Torre Elvira. Y Ana del Carmen del Castillo Everett. Marta Díaz Ramos. Sofía Duener Cuandrón. Lucía Domínguez Castro. <laughs> Sara Echaniz Puruta. Andrea Enriquez Sanchez. <laughs> Elena Estrella Ortega. Andrea del Valle Forte Rosales. <laughs> María Ángel García Carvajal. Max Garcia Andrews. <laughs> Matias Gentilini. Jarl Alfred Oscar Gibson. Marco Gil Harris. the third row please stand <laughs> Ignacio Gomez Velasco Adrián Gómez Rodolfo.
Carla Gonzalez. Jessica B. Gonzalez Rolf. <laughs> Douglas Brian Gronke the third. Alejandro Helmrich Laura. Camila Hernandez Caraballo. Lucas Herrero Guerrero. <laughs> María Eduarda Jaizi Pereira. Kira Seki Pussy. <laughs> Camille Isnard Campos. Paula Izquierdo Muñoz. <laughs> Alan Yu Kang. Mia Keller. <laughs> Bowman Kim. Will the fourth row please stand? <laughs> Noah Lanovsky. Mercedes Yadon Martin. <laughs> Noah Leo Gandarillas. Clara Dariana Lopez Bolaños. <laughs> Stella Luis Lopez Phillips. Daniel Euren Lu Chen.
Addison Jade Lourdes. Run Ping Mao Wei. Adriana Martinez Rodero. Marin Christine Meinhold. <laughs> Sergio Merchan Arzuaga. Natalia Lucia Mesa Ramos. Alfonso Morano Secares. Mariana Morodo Laureiro. Jordan Isaac Muller. Will the fifth row please stand? Erkan Nasirli. Patrick Montgomery Newman. Diego Oliveros Rabago. Amram Samuel Howie Oyugi. William Michael Peretti. Alejandro Perez Pelaez. In absentia, Marco Ramos Caballero. <laughs> Nicolás Ramos Garcia.
Claudia Revuelta. Bautista Río Mayor. Jimena Roses Martín Borregón. Alexandra María Rosillo Hayes. Alba Ruiz. Zina Saez Portillo. <laughs> Will the sixth row please stand? Bosco Sánchez de Prado. <laughs> Carlos Shaver El Aguirre. Jose Sevilla. Amara Marisa Smith. Igor Stoliarov. <laughs> Barbara Suarez Ran. Nicholas Carlos Tello Young. <laughs> Gonzalo Tomas de Carranza. Andre Javier Thompson. <laughs> Alessandra Lucia Jacinto Poisson.
Antonia Francesca Elki Vesoli. Jingyao Wang Wu. Loi Yum. Alex Yu Wong. Francesca Saya de Achaval. Fran complained in ninth grade that she was always at the end of the list. But last but not least, Noya Zeidman. Please take a seat. Now, Mr. Ben Mr. Benjamin Weinberg will present the class of 2023. Ahora, el señor Benjamin Weinberg presentará la promoción del 2023. So the uh, privilege of going last is you have the last words. The hard part about going last is that you as an audience and you as a class have already heard eloquence, heartfelt, and the words that define and frame both this class and this event. There's very little that I can add necessarily. I am going to say a couple things and then present the class though. I've thought a lot about the difference between advice and example. If you do a search for commencement or graduation addresses, you'll get all kinds of advice from movie stars, from politicians, from scientists, from all kinds of people who will tell you the 10 things you need to remember, or the five or the one big lesson, admirals. Everyone's had their say on it. I was someone growing up who did not like to take advice from anyone. I rather tended to go the opposite direction. If I sensed that advice was coming or a lecture, my father was a professor, I would tend to go the opposite direction. What I found that was ironic later on was that I hung out with old timers out on a small island in Maine. These were men and women who had lived on an island, who had farmed, who had fished, who had fought in World War II, who had organized labor unions, who had sailed single-handed up and down the coast. They were remarkably independent people. And the last thing they figured they would ever do was give another fellow advice. They tell you stories, though. And the stories generally had a point. And so I painted boats and worked on engines and did carpentry work and heard the stories again and again and again. And those stories represent the accumulated wisdom never in the form of advice because a fellow can choose what he wants to do and there's more than one ways to get it done. So there's not advice that I can say to these young men and women that are here on the stage and getting ready to be ASM alumni. But I do want to reflect back what they are carrying forward and what they've left behind. If, as Mr. Bolster has said many times, we do school with you, not to you, then the corollary of that is that we learn along with you. And so from my heart, 
and from my own personal self, I would like to thank you, the student, for the lessons you have taught me, for the examples that you have set, for the times you have reminded me when my values or my decisions might have slipped, because every one of us is in danger of that, and sometimes it takes a young, clear voice to remind you about what's important. So thank you for that. You have, as the other speakers have mentioned, have left many things behind. And I would like just to pause for a minute and think about what some of those are. When you played a solo in the band or the orchestra or the choir, there was somebody out there in the audience listening thinking, I'm going to do that one day. That's going to be me up there on the stage. And they had a new vision and set a goal for themselves. When they came to the IB Art Show and saw your courage and your exhibits, young artists said, that could be me. I could do that. And they've set a goal for themselves and done the same thing. In many ways, whether it's with your buddies or it's in these kinds of projects that are shared in a community of learners, you have set an example, not just for the younger kids, but for all of them, for all of us. And I thank you for that very much. Now we're going to go to the fun part. Will the class of 22, 2023 please rise? Parents, families, faculty, honored guests, the students that you see in front of you have met the requirements for graduation at the American School of Madrid. And by the authority granted me by the Middle States Association of Schools and Colleges and by the ASM Board of Trustees, I pronounce these students graduates of the American School of Madrid. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left.
please join us at the front of the school for some refreshments on the Don Quixote Park. Thank you.